It's quarterfinal time at the Atlantic 10 Tournament. St. Louis stars Kevin Lish and Gwamain Mitchell ready to battle against the regular season A-10 champs. All hands on deck for the Xavier Musketeers in Atlantic City. Atlantic City, New Jersey, and we have set up shop inside Boardwalk Hall, the venue for the 2009 Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Tournament, quarterfinal number one, featuring St. Louis and 19th-ranked Xavier. Here's a look at the way the bracket shakes out. Xavier, as the top seed, had a first-round bye, and St. Louis worked hard in the first round, getting past LaSalle in overtime. Hi there, Jason Dapp here along with Steve Wolf and Steve Xavier has won three straight regular season titles of the Atlantic 10. Question is, can the Musketeers win a conference tournament crown? They haven't done it the last two years. If they will this season, well, the big three Musketeers really need to shine. Well, they really have to. These guys have done everything in their careers. B.J. Raymond, the winningest player in Xavier's history. Derek Brown, who's a redshirt junior, is coming back next year. And C.J. Anderson, who's two years, has done an excellent job leading the Xavier tradition and leading the Xavier team. They'd like to have a win here this afternoon. These two teams met back in January. Big win for Xavier, and Derek Brown was nearly perfect. Well, he really was. He had a great game. But you know, Jason, he only played 19 minutes in this game. He was very efficient from the outside and also the inside. He is going to be a thorn in St. Louis's side. They need to make sure they control and contain him this afternoon. Well, the Billikens started the year as one of the youngest teams in the country, but Rick Majerus has coached and prodded, pushed them close to the 20-win mark, and freshman Kwame Mitchell in particular really starting to come of age, and that showed through in the first round overtime win against LaSalle yesterday. That really did. He willed this team to victory. He did a great job. Rick Majerus calling on the freshman to take the game-winning shot at the end of regulation, and he came up to us a little bit short, but in the huddle, at the timeout, Rick Majerus told Mitchell, get the ball to the rim, and he did such a great job teardrop in the lane with 1.8 seconds left. LaSalle unable to get the final desperation shot to go down and then St. Louis advancing. Now Mitchell got it done there in overtime. The key for the Explorers went awry. Setting up our quarterfinal showdown today. The Billikens, can they pull the surprise on top seeded Xavier? Find out. We get started in a moment. Back here in Atlantic City, just about ready to tip it up. Game one of the first of four quarterfinals here at the 2009 Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Tournament. Rick Majerus, his second year as head coach at St. Louis, 21st year overall, never had a losing season over 450 victories. Here are the Geico starting lineups for this one, beginning with the Billikens from St. Louis. Seven scholarship freshmen on the roster, three in the starting lineup, including Mitchell, along with seniors Kevin Lish and Tommy Liddell III. Brian Conklin and Big Willie Reed rounding out the starting five for St. Louis. For Xavier, well, first team All-Atlantic 10 performer, B.J. Raymond there, along with Dante Jackson, Jason Love, Derek Brown, C.J. Anderson, uh, patrolling the middle for Sean Miller. And the Xavier Musketeers, his fifth season as the head man in Cincinnati. They won the last three A-10 regular season titles, three straight NCAA trips, including the run to the Elite Eight. A year ago, the officials for today, Gene Steratore, Lamar Simpson, Paul Fea. It is up, and we are underway. St. Louis in the blue with a white trim. Xavier the exact opposite, white with a blue. Mitchell gets it off to Lish. As we see so many times in conference tournament settings, Steve, the team that's played the day before will Xavier go right after the Billikens right away and try to wear them down. Well, I think the Billikens really are not that deep. As you see, an offensive foul. I think that's on Conklin. It is Brian Conklin, the freshman out of North Eugene, Oregon, called for the 
offensive foul. I really think in these kind of games, you got to stick with who you are. Xavier's going to probably try to make their, their run, getting the ball inside, uh, setting up right now St. Louis in a 2-3 zone. They are susceptible inside. They're playing a big lineup here this afternoon. You see the zone look from the Billikens. Brown will try a three. Got it. Really improved his three-point shooting this year. 33rd three ball of the season for the 6A junior. Brown doesn't shoot too many of them, but he's shooting at 43% on the year. From the three point line. And Mitchell. He'll step back and launch the three. Hits the deck. No call. Reed tried to save it. And it belongs to Xavier. You saw right there, Jason, where Xavier threw two big guys out at Mitchell, making sure that it was hard to get that jump shot over top of the big fellas. Mitchell's going to have to penetrate against Xavier and get some easy points in the lane. Now Xavier, 24-6 and six overall this year, started off conference play 8-0, then 4-4 four and four down the stretch. Certainly they had the bullseye on their backs as the defending conference champs, but trying to find some consistency here in the postseason tournament. Xavier, first two shots are outside jump shots. Not really the way Sean Miller likes to have it. He'd like to go inside, but right now St. Louis is really clogging up the inside. Again, St. Louis, number one of the Atlantic 10 in scoring defense and number one of the country in three-point percentage defense. They will play a rugged style of defense on their end of the floor, but so far the offense struggling for the Billiton. St. Louis is gonna, not going to give you anything easy, but you got to make it work. you got to get the ball into the lane. That's a great pass by Derrick Brown. Good push by Brown over to Jason Love, and he's fouled on Conklin. That's a quick two on the freshman. With Derrick Brown hitting his first outside jump shot, you got to respect his three-point touch. So they come out on him. He drives and penetrates around. He gives a nice dish pass to Love. Jason Love, one of the best free throw shooters for the Musketeers. And back in his home neck of the woods from Philadelphia. Atlantic City about an hour away. Into the Abington Friends School. And the 6'9 junior misses the first free throw. And a substitution right away. Ryan Conklin with those two personals will take a seat. It's Brett Thompson, fellow freshman from Vienna, Illinois. And Essentially, if you see somebody come in off the bench for St. Louis, pretty good chance they're a freshman. Yeah, it is, and they're not really deep. They're not getting enough production off the bench. And, you know, Lish, Liddell, and Mitchell all played over 37 minutes in yesterday's game. Barry Eberhardt, one of the three seniors for St. Louis, also checking into the game as well. Now, Steve, while we've got a moment, keys to the game here for the Billikens. Well, I think it's, it's so important for Xavier, uh, to, to, or for St. Louis to control the tempo and really to dominate the perimeter. What I mean by that is that their guard play has to be really good and they have to try to make sure they slow Xavier down and, uh, and, and just take good shots in the offensive end. There's a little bit of a clock issue right now trying to get that rectified here at Boardwalk Hall. Rick Majerus looking on with his squad. Kevin Lish, one of those leaders. And Jason Love ready to step to the free throw line for the second attempt. You talk about representing your team and your school, your family and your conference, Kevin Lish. Just an outstanding contributions to this program. Uh, slowly working their way to fixing the clock. They've got it done now. 17.56. Left to go here in the opening half and Love back at the line. And the second free throw is true. Right now, St. Louis has got to move that ball around. They have to get something going to the basket. They've been really perimeter and haven't had good attempts at the basket. Bad possession so far to start the game. They got caught in a dog fight yesterday with LaSalle. Low scoring game. Both teams playing splendid defense. And the Billikens making a couple of key plays down the stretch. The Biggie, the Mitchell. Teardrop in overtime to win it. Lish pumps, fakes, and sticks the jumper. That's a long two for the senior from Belleville, Illinois. St. Louis ran the shot clock down, and Lish has hit some trouble this year with his jump shot, really gaining confidence. Needs to get that back, but it was a nice spot-up move. 
getting around B.J. Raymond. Well, Lish had 11 in the first round win against LaSalle, but just one of eight from long range. That's one of his specialties. Anderson gets it back from Love. Working on Eberhardt. Now Love, left-handed turn and swish. That's so big for Xavier because that opens up the outside for the shooters. For B.J. Raymond and Derek Brown, nice dish inside. Off-handed shot by Love. Love at 11 points, six rebounds in the win against the Billikens in January. You know, Jason, I think the number one thing that Xavier's trying to do is make it hard for St. Louis to score. And right here, you see everything is out in the perimeter out here. There's nothing going toward the basket until Lish gets around the uh, B.J. Raymond and makes a nice spot-up move. But you see all the ball movement is perimeter. They got to get some penetration in the lane via the dribble of the pass. Foul on Derek Brown of Xavier. That's his first. Kenny Freeze, Jamel McLean, both into the game for the Musketeers. Terrell Holloway as well. And the speedy freshman on the take for the Musketeers. Raymond left open. That's a three. That was a smart play by Holloway, getting it back out on the uh, fast break. And a nice skip pass to B.J. Raymond for the wide open three. St. Louis has got to extend on the jump shooters. Quick seven point cushion for Xavier. Lish trying to answer. Back out to Liddell. I'll tell you, Jason, Xavier is playing very, very energetic and very good defense in the lane, making sure there's no dribble drive opportunities. Raven. Working into the paint. Off glass and down. B.J. B.J. Raymond with another big bucket for Xavier, forcing Rick Majerus to burn a timeout. Xavier four of five shooting so far. Well, they've really set up this game by hitting the outside jump shots, and then B.J. Raymond taking the ball down himself, a 6'6 guard, strong to the basket. It's really where he's improved his game so much this year. It helps when you can hit that outside jump shot to open up the game. Now here's a look at the Musketeers' keys to the game. Sean Miller got to be pleased with what they've done so far. And Sean Miller's made no, you know, he's made no qualms about telling everybody that if we don't rebound and we don't defend, we cannot re uh, win the game. And I think that so far they're doing that. The defense is the number one key that Sean Miller and company looks at every game. If they can stop the dribble drive, they've been okay and they can win games. And I think, you know, seeing the shoot around yesterday, these guys, uh, everybody's really trying from the Xavier standpoint to say that our last eight games were an aberration. Let's get back and let's start playing what we did earlier in the year. Now the half court defense that the Musketeers pride themselves on have done the job so far. The Billikens just one of four from the floor here in the opening four minutes in chain. Mitchell lost it out of bounds. St. Louis trying to find its stride of the Musketeers Hardy in fine form in AC. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. The greatest college sports video library of all time. Introducing the new NCAA.com, the official site of college sports. Watch Bracket Breakdown presented by Bass Pro Shops immediately following the CBS NCAA Selection Show Sunday at 7. Now the Musketeers have been riding high in recent years, especially with Sean Miller at the helm, and it has continued in this season. 12-4 in the Atlantic 10 regular season, 24-6 overall. Wrapping up a third straight regular season conference crown as high as 7 in the Associated Press top 25 rankings throughout the season and the numbers thoroughly impressive of what they've done the last four years. Well, 20 win seasons, NCAA appearances, and you know, now it's starting to be routine where Xavier people talk about getting to the Elite Eight and the Final Four. And this team, if they play good defense and the point guard play holds up, they have a chance 
of advancing. Sean Miller saying this week teams fall into two categories this time of the year. Teams hungry to play deep into March, those hoping to go deep into March. So the last two years his teams were hungry. He's going to find out about this year's team starting in this game. B.J. Raymond again on the way to the hole and foul. Xavier's doing a nice job of, of setting up their inside game. They're two for three from the outside, so St. Louis is extending on the perimeter, and that's just a nice body pick by Kenny Freeze. He's a huge body in the lane. It was like a wall that Raymond could get to the basket. Foul on Kevin Lish, that's his first. And Raymond stroking the free throw. Substitutions here for the Billikens. Kyle Cassidy in. Paul Eckerly as well. And Mitchell gets a breather. He has certainly been bumped around and working hard on the offensive end. St. Louis with three turnovers in their first seven possessions. On the other side, Xavier has three assists. St. Louis has to take care of the basketball. Billikens trying to stop a 9-0 run here for Xavier. Cassidy, back out to Eckerle. Everhart will try from three. And Freeze, screening off Reed to collect the loose ball. They were doing a nice job of keeping St. Louis out of the middle. Holloway sticks the jumper. Boy, that is really big for the freshman who has ridden the roller coaster throughout his first season with Xavier. He really has. He's trying to learn to play under Sean Miller, who's a point guard himself. Tough guy to play for when you're a point guard. Eckerly open for three. And the sophomore drains it. Guy that the Billikens, Rick Gutierrez found him, was originally going to come to St. Louis on an academic scholarship and retooling the program, found him and is using him. McLean can't hit the layup. St. Louis needs to still continue. Now they've hit one jump shot to get to the basket. That's a great move by Everhart, taking it strong into the paint. McLean on one end, missing the chippy layup, and then getting called for the foul on the other hand. You see Everhart, nice ball fake. Goes right to the heart of the defense. And that has been the Achilles heel for Xavier this year, especially in the 8-10. Foul on Jamel McLean, his first. Barry Everhart. And a career-high 26 against Fordham earlier this year. Rick Majerus really praising his defense, said in the first round win against LaSalle, that may have been the best defensive game that Barry Eberhardt has played throughout his entire St. Louis career, and really uh, throughout his whole team. And John Giannini of LaSalle, the head coach, said, you know, asked what type of style defense does St. Louis play. He says they play old-school 1976 Indiana in-your-face defense. And with a young team, Majerus seemingly focusing on that, and it's really carried them throughout the season. But Everhart, 6'6", was flying out at the guards, really defending. And, uh, it was an ugly game yesterday, but it was a great one. Both teams shot in the 30s for the game. Three-point ace, Brad Redford, into the game for Xavier. He is a shooting machine. Holloway, now thinking about the three and then the drive and too many steps in the thought process. St. Louis doing a nice job of clogging up the middle. They're trying to play big with Thompson in the game. Conklin has a two foul, so Everhart's going to have to play big on the defensive end. Holloway, quick hands to poke it away from Mitchell, but Pomaine recovers. It's a great matchup with Holloway and Mitchell. Mitchell making the first of the all-rookie all team this year. Did a great job. Holloway trying to do that same thing that Mitchell did. Thrown away by St. Louis. Anderson, skip pass, Holloway. Brown, hard-working rebound. Got the mismatch against Cassidy, gets it off to Anderson. The layup, count that in the foul. That was just athleticism right there. Derrick Brown, taller than Cassidy, just out jumps him. And then he goes up in the air and he stops. He ball fakes while he's palming the ball. He ball faked the ball to Redford, who was open, and he gives it to Anderson. Credit Derrick Brown with a great assist. And the foul is on Eberhardt. 
As you see Holloway exit. Ante Jackson returns, and Anderson been kind of beat up at times, a little lower back issue. But playing through it at this time of the year, you're hurt. You're still suiting up for the most part. And Xavier now has the lead out to 12. So far, Mitchell has been rendered useless offensively. His couple turnovers really not getting in the flow of the game. We need to get him going. Thompson, the freshman working inside, stepped on the baseline, turnover Billigans. That's number five for St. Louis in that category. Xavier doing a very good job of making sure that the big guys don't get the ball, but when they do, pushing them away from the basket. Now, St. Louis bringing in the big fellow, Willie Reed. He's 6'9". He's a bean pole, but he's going to be a good one for years to come for St. Louis. Don't look again here for the Billikens. Three ball short for Redford. And Cassidy gets the rebound. Mitchell kicks out to Lish. Can Reed establish on the inside? Yes, and one. Well, you can see this kid is going to get better and better. He's strong. He's got good hands. And Rick Majerus loves his intensity. He's got a lot of energy. And you'll see this nice move against the Jason Love. And you can tell his energy. Gives a big glare. Trying to get his team back into this game. Nice move by Willie Reed. Foul on Brad Redford. That's his first. Willie Reed at eight points, seven rebounds versus LaSalle in the first round, and one very hard fall. Went down in a heap in the first half. He's got the wind knocked out of him. Left the game on his own power and came back in. And was a big factor in the Billikens' overtime win. Reed missing the free throw. Jackson, working baseline, stripped off the Xavier player. St. Louis ball when we come back. The Musketeers, top seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament, playing like it early on in the quarterfinals. Now the St. Louis defense has been so stout throughout the season, but the Xavier defenders have been here, there, and everywhere in the early going. Well, we've talked about rebound and defense, and Xavier is just keeping St. Louis at bay. A lot of ball movement around the perimeter, but not much inside that three-point line. And when they do throw it inside there, they've been turning the basketball over. Actually, Xavier has nine points off of St. Louis' turnovers. Once again, big guys having a problem getting the ball in the paint. We talked about St. Louis being number one in three-point percentage defense. Well, overall field goal defense, it's the Musketeers in the top spot in the Atlantic 10, holding foes to under 40% on the season. Xavier now picking up a little full-court pressure. They don't do this very often. Trying to pick up the pace here on St. Louis' offensive end. St. Louis controlling the tempo, slowing the ball down a little bit, slowing the movement around on the offensive end. Well, pressure here from Xavier Love trying to tap it out, but it will remain Billiken basketball. Well, Xavier winning three of the last seven Atlantic 10 tournament titles, four overall, but the last of those came in 2006. Trying to take the first step to Pulling off the season double, the regular season title, and then the conference crown. Reed will pull up from 16 feet and hit it. Good range for the big freshman. That does not bode well for the other big men in this conference because if he can pull out and hit that jump shot, he's just as talented as he is down low. Reed has four. The Billikens have whittled the Xavier lead back to single digits. Love trying to set up on the block. Skip pass. Jackson. In and out. Here's Lish for the Billikens. Reed lost the handle. Anderson. 
Raymond attacking again and fouled by Liddell. St. Louis needs to get production off the bench and now they're getting it. Willie Reed, you'll see Lish looking over at the big fella, number 33. Oh, this is a steal by Anderson. Nice give up to B.J. Raymond in transition. You know, C.J. Anderson has a tendency sometimes to take it too far in the lane, but that was a nice dish to trailing Raymond. Raymond knocks down the free throw, 80% shooter thereabouts this season. You see Kenny Freeze coming back, Everhart for St. Louis as well. And Sean Miller this week so excited for B.J. Raymond's first team selection uh, to the all-conference squad. Guy who averaged about nine minutes as a freshman, 13 minutes as a sophomore. Last year the sixth man, but still a role player. Really far exceeded the coach's expectations. Doesn't jump high, doesn't run fast, hasn't played a lot of two guard, but has just done what you would like a college player to do and really an example for future Xavier players. What can happen when you work hard? Good ball work here for St. Louis. Mitchell able to capitalize with the up and under. You hit the nail on the head, Jason. Excellent ball movement. Got the defense out of whack, and Mitchell was able to get a seam to the basket. Nice acrobatic move by the freshman. You'll see here, good ball movement. That's why Mitchell is able to get around B.J. Raymond and then through the big fellas for Xavier. Kenny Freeze, Derek Brown jumping. You know, you're playing against a guy who's 5'10", uh, maybe. You really just need to stand there, but Mitchell acrobatically gets the ball to go in. Anderson gets the reverse layup. Well, the Cincinnati native started his career at Manhattan College, back home and back in a big way for Xavier. And the Musketeers, the lead back to not. Lish responds with a two for St. Louis. Nice dribble drive and backed away. It's called a step away and nice play by Kevin Lish. Good to see him get going early. Brown off the dribble. Rebound Anderson. Over to Kenny Freeze who gets the lay. I'm really impressed with the way that C.J. Anderson, the senior, is playing this afternoon. Good passes and also the hustle on the offensive board. I think it's two, actually two assists for C.J. early in the game. Liddell trying to back down on Anderson. Good look on the inside of the finish from Brett Thompson. Well, the quality of offense has really been ratcheted up here the last four or five trips down the court. The Billikens have hit their last six shots. Brown back to Anderson. 12 left in the shot clock for Xavier. The lead for Freeze and fouled by Thompson. You, Jason, you have to be really impressed of the way C.J. Anderson has come out passing here in this first half. You'll see the nice offensive rebound by Anderson, just willing and getting around the, his defender and then throwing the nice bounce pass to Freeze. And then this last play, a nice interior pass, which they're hard to make, especially, especially to a big guy like Freeze. Freeze going the line for two. Well, the working parts for Xavier, when they flick this year, they have been so difficult to beat, especially the early season wins against the likes of Memphis, Virginia Tech, stubbed their toe against Duke and Butler, but then responded with 11 straight wins, really in the heart of the regular season schedule. When you watch this Xavier team, I don't think it's ever been pointed out so easily. When they win games, it's because they rebound and defend. When they lose games, it's because, you know, obviously they have a porous defense, but they also turn the ball over against Duquesne, against Butler, against Duke. They turn the ball over routinely early in the game. Freeze sticking the second free throw and then going over to have a chat with Sean Miller on the Xavier bench. In this pressure put on by Xavier, I think that because of the game yesterday and how many minutes Mitchell, Liddell, and Lish all played, Trying to make him go a full 40 minutes with extreme pressure. Kwamein well, Mitchell headed into our neighborhood and not able to save the basketball. 
Well, the hard-working freshman went flying in big time. Xavier by eight with 8-10 on a rolling clock left to go here. In the first half, quarterfinal number one, 2009 Atlantic 10 tournament. Reed blocks Love, and the Billikens take control. There was a real big mismatch. Everhart was guarding Jason Love down low. Love had a really nice seal back. And you'll see the pass from McLean. And then Willie Reed comes over. Great help defense by Reed. Coming off his man McLean to, to get the block. Mitchell, 4-3, short and the rebound by McLean. Double team on the inside, Love lost it out of bounds. Xavier will have possession when we come back. St. Louis trying to hang around here against the top seed in the 0-9-8-10 tournament. The Musketeers 24, St. Louis 16, 731 left to go here in the first half. The Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship continues this week here at Atlantic City. If you don't have your tickets yet, go to Boardwalk Hall Ticket Office or call Ticketmaster. And be sure to visit AtlanticCityNJ.com for all the latest information about tickets, discounts, and fan zone. That's AtlanticCityNJ.com. Well, Jason, right now it's clearly obvious what Xavier's trying to do. They're trying to get the ball inside to the big fellas. You know, they've been shooting the outside jump shot pretty well, but you'll see right here, you see Jason Love right there stepping up. Now how open it is, you'll see the drop pass. But over here, that's where you see Cassidy coming over and giving a hands worth of help. When you're playing against a bigger team, you have to have help defense. The next man over, Cassidy and Willie Reed helping out there. Well, the January meeting between these teams, Xavier scored 70 points. 44 of them came from in the paint. So no secret, the Musketeers had success inside last time and tried to follow up with some of the same approaches this time. Love again. Turn jump hook, back iron. And the rebound by Liddell. Here's Mitchell. Three times the last four weeks, he's been the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week. Impressive take, but the offensive foul called on Pomaine Mitchell. Brad Redford doing a nice job of getting over there and setting up camp. Mitchell gets around Holloway, and you'll see Love and Redford over there to take the charge. Right now, the big three for St. Louis, Lish, Liddell, and Mitchell struggling to get going. They only have six points between them. Uncharacteristic eight turnovers here in the first half for St. Louis. They have been very protective of the basketball, especially in their success points throughout the season. Well, I think you've got to credit Xavier's defense. They really struggled against Richmond. Kevin Anderson, the sophomore, lit him up for 29 on dribble drive, just getting to the basket. Xavier trying to make sure they don't have that happened again here this afternoon. About five days off since that last outing, and the Musketeers have come out with much more aggression on defense. And now Liddell's got to get something going. I have not seen him in probably the 15 games I've done with him not even score here in the first 14 minutes. Willie Reed able to get two from the baseline. He's three of the three from the floor now for six points. We're talking to the St. Louis people. They feel that Reed and Mitchell really are the guys that you're going to look for. They're the guys that are leading this team right now. Love trying to save it. Can't. Billiken basketball. St. Louis is doing a great job defensively in the last five or six possessions, limiting touches and making sure they force Xavier to take tough shots. Here's Tommy Liddell with third, trying to get on track offensively. Former A-10 Rookie of the Year a few years back, senior from East St. Louis, Illinois.
Liddell, short of a jumper. Everhart with a rebound. Now for the baseline, Barry hits the lead, which at one time was 13, now down to four. Raymond able to respond, the first player in double figures in the game. He's got 10, and Sean Miller takes a 30-second timeout. St. Louis doing a nice job, especially Barry Eberhard of going to the offensive glass. You'll see the nice shot by Eberhard off the dish from Adele, but that's a second chance basket for St. Louis. On the other hand, Xavier wouldn't need a big shot. They go to number 11. He's hit so many in his career at Xavier. B.J. Raymond with the step back over Kyle Cassidy. Miller taking the timeout, uh, trying possibly to set up the defense as St. Louis has taken advantage. And the Musketeers break the huddle, 5.22 left to go. And look at what Raymond has accomplished in his career at Xavier with 100 victories, most of any player in Musketeer program history. And you alluded to this earlier, it wasn't the easiest road for B.J. Raymond. Uh, uh, he, he, he really struggled early on, but stuck with it. You can see every year he's gotten better. And now he's got that nice drive, you know, to you know, help out with that outside jump shot. Liddell left open. That's a big three for him and the team. St. Louis is 9 of 11 after starting 1 of 5. Really, they have the momentum right now. And that's important for St. Louis to get Liddell in the game. The senior has to play a role in this game or they cannot win. That defense so stifling for the Musketeers early. The adjustments made by Rick Majerus and the Billikens have opened things up. Lish diving for the basketball. Well, no foul out of bounds. It'll belong to Xavier. Tommy Liddell is a key guy for St. Louis. And you see C.J. Anderson gets caught behind two picks. Liddell able to get a wide open three. You cannot leave Liddell open. Even if he hasn't scored earlier, even shot the basketball well, he's a good enough shooter. you got to get out in his face. Missed his first two cracks from the field, but that one was true. Jamel McLean back on the floor here for Xavier. Five left to shoot. Jackson trying to go towards the basket. It belongs still to the Musketeers, but five left on the shot clock. Brown will trigger here for Xavier. Well, they had Kenny Freeze open, but they go to McLean, who was wide open. Got it knocked away. Freeze got it back, and it is a shot clock violation. McLean did not hit the basket. He was wide open. Great defensive play by St. Louis. And the shot clock hasn't changed. It was in five seconds. Went out of bounds. And it did not and start on the restart. Seconds. Yep. And the backside official, Paul Fea, came racing over to signify that he believed it was a shot clock violation. It was a slow developing out of bounds play. Kenny Freeze was open initially. Derek Brown decided to go to McLean. McLean went strong to the basket, but good defensive effort, as you'll see right here. There's five seconds over here on the shot clock when it starts. But you'll see Kenny Freeze right here is open. And then McLean come back, comes back in. And that's a great play by Brett Thompson. But see it right here. Shot clock is not moving. And the officials coming over. Probably going to take a peek here at that to see how much time ran off the clock. Both teams huddled up around their respective coaches. And we've talked about what Sean Miller has accomplished the last few years at Xavier, but Rick Majerus really already starting to put his stamp on this Billiken team. And you know, you look at his resume, starting as the assistant at Marquette a long time ago, and going on to his head coaching stops at, at Marquette at a Ball State in Utah. No losing seasons in 20 plus years as a head coach. Being able to figure out with your personnel what works, what doesn't work, focus 
on the positives and make them work. It, it's really pushed through with this young team. That's interesting. He came in here with two solid players, Lish and Liddell, and he'll he'll tell you. We sat down to talk with him a little bit ago, and he was saying that he felt so bad for Lish and Liddell because they're they're on the downside of their career and they're not going to be involved. And in as you see this play right here, I, I don't think it hit the rim. And try the to clock didn't move either. Yeah, try to figure out how much time had elapsed and how much time should be left on the clock. And now Gene Steratore, Lamar Simpson, Paul Fea will powwow a little bit more to get things situated. We were talking about, you know, Majerus and what he's done. I mean, it was a tough deal to put Lish and Liddell on the back burner, but his feeling is these guys are still going to be a part of something big when St. Louis does turn it around. And arguably, you know, they're close to winning 20 games. They've done a pretty good job. As you check out what he's done overall. And yeah, taking 11 teams to the NCAA tournament, including the great run by Utah in one of those years. And uh, next year, a couple of recruits from Australia. They'll actually be younger next year. They'll be a sophomore freshman team with these three seniors graduating. So the youth movement will continue for Rick Majerus, but you get the sense that he's got something built for the long haul with the Billikens. Now, they do rule it a shot clock violation. 428 put on the game clock, but now starting to wind under 420. And St. Louis down by as many as 13 in this first half. The opportunity to tie here with a three. St. Louis has got a hop in their step, and they've done it defensively, and it's translated to their offense. Xavier's got to match the intensity. Lish pull up three. Brown with a rebound. Derek Brown, some offensive activity early, and now another one here with under four to go. That's a great athleticism. Derek Brown, 6'9", bringing the ball up court and just dribble drive for an easy shot. The leading score for the Musketeers, about 14 a game, has five so far. See the step out from Freeze and Mitchell. Good pass to Reed, fouled by Freeze. Now Derek Brown able to score from all over the floor. The last time, taking it off the window and down. On the floor. Quarterfinal number one here at the Atlantic 10 men's basketball tournament. Xavier by five on St. Louis coming up at halftime. He'll dive a little bit more in depth on the career of senior. B.J. Raymond of Xavier will look at the Atlantic 10 All-Conference first team. Plus, we'll have a chat with Atlantic 10 Commissioner Bernadette McLean. That's all coming up here at the half. And there is B.J. Raymond, part of that first team, All-Atlantic 10. And certainly worthy of the honor for what he has done this year. About 14 points per game. Almost five rebounds in contest as well. And really helped guiding this Musketeer squad to a third straight regular season title in the Atlantic 10. Willie Reed has given this St. Louis team a shot not only on the defensive end, uh, probably more so on the offensive end with six first half points. St. Louis started out one of five and since then, and they're 9 for 12, and they are on fire right now and clearly have the momentum. And the Billikens struggling from the free throw line. Certainly not able to get it done. One of five now from the free throw line. And Rick Majerus, a couple key misses, the last two regular season losses to Duquesne and LaSalle. So they need to learn to value the free throw a little bit more. We'll see if that costs the Billikens later on in the contest. Give and go. Freeze gets it back from Holloway. Can't finish. Brown picks up the loose chain. He almost lost it. And finally, a foul call. St. Louis coach Rick Majerus has brought on Alex Jensen. You see right there. Jensen played for Majerus at Utah and then played pro basketball. Probably the best player that Majerus said he coached at Utah. Brought him on board, and he's really helped these young guys. When you have seven newcomers in here, especially some big guys, he's been able to lend a lot of credibility to what Rick Majerus is doing. I'll give him some credit for what, they're, what they've done this year. That foul on Everhart, 
his second, eighth as a team. Brown in the one and one. Misses, rebound to Conklin. Mitchell watched by Holloway. This freshman set to battle for a few more years here in the Atlantic 10. Reed trying to set a screen for Lish. Liddell, Reed on the baseline. Off strong, draws contact. It's a nice strong move by Tommy Liddell. Liddell going with his strong hand left. Looking inside for big Willie Reed. You'll see Willie Reed is a benef benefactor of McLean helping out. And then after the pass was made, he went back and made the foul on Reed, but good help defense by McLean. Somebody's got to pick up his man. Now Reed makes his first free throw of the game in four attempts and from Kansas City. The freshman, as you see, McLean and Brown take a seat for the Musketeers. Now Reed missed all of last year in high school because of transfer rules. There was actually talk of redshirting him this year, but... The Jersey Company were worried two full years with that game experience might really slow his growth process, and it's put him in, and boy, he's really paid off the visit. And he's really paid off lately. You know, since January, Mitchell and, and Willie Reed have gotten better and better and have been leading this club. Right now, Xavier's got to look at their bread and butter. they got to start getting the ball inside. E.J. Raymond's got to handle the ball a little bit here. Holloway. Got space in the paint, made the most of it. Big play by Holloway, a little teardrop in the lane. Played very well against Richmond. He's starting to get his confidence back, and it's the right time of year to be confident. And the freshman from Hempstead, New York, he and Dante Jackson splitting time at the paint. Time one's been hot, the other has it, vice versa. And at times, they've both not played up to potential, but Sean Miller trying to find the right combination here in Mark. Love on the low block. Good feed, Anderson for two. That is great interior passing. We talked about CJ making good passes early on. Anderson now the recipient of a great internal pass from Jason Love. Seven points now for CJ Anderson. And the lead back to seven. Under a minute left here, first half, quarterfinal number one, the Atlantic 10 tournament. Conklin. Uh, Conklin just a grinder inside for St. Louis. Uh, here's the great look, Jackson on the block to love. And the double team comes, find the open man, and C.J. Anderson finishes the pretty play. And the foul on Anderson. That's his first. And Conklin continues the dry spell for St. Louis from the free throw line. Now three of eight in the game. Conklin, the all-time single game scoring record leader at his high school, North Eugene, Oregon, at 41 points. Guy who used to hold that record. Fairly familiar name. He could fill it up in his day. Danny Ainge, former BYU star. Now the general manager of the Boston Celtics after his great NBA career. About a 20-second differential between game clock and shot clock here. Xavier will need to move. They go to Love. Under duress, couldn't put it home. And now the shot clock, just about a two-second difference between game and shot clock. Mitchell looks like he'll slow things down and try to hold for a final shot here for the Billikens. Watch for Lish trying to dribble, penetrate, and either look it for an outside jump shot by Liddell. We're going to try to take it to the basket, just Mitchell. like last night. Yeah, Mitchell had that teardrop, now deals it off. Thompson can't get it to go. They got an open look on the inside for the freshman. Can't put it in. 
And Rick Majerus with two seconds on the clock here, trying to get his team set defensively. And the pass is in. Raymond turns, fires. Got it off the glass. Count the basket. Well, a double-digit lead for a lot of the first half for the Musketeers. St. Louis cut it back down. C.J. Anderson did it, saying, did it count? Yes, it did. Here's another look. The heaved inside half court. The turn, the fake. The leaning look. Off glass and good. And a 10-point cushion at the break for Xavier. Steve Wolf standing by with Sean Miller. Hey, Coach, you got off to a great start. St. Louis came back into it. That shot's a big, uh, should be a big push for you guys. It is. Um, you know, it's, I guess, why you at the last play of the game, make sure you can throw one deep and heave it up. It just makes sense uh, that you get a shot. And I thought our guys did a good job of making the play. You know, I, I think one of the big things in the first half, Steve, is just our big guys' inability to finish around the basket. You know, I don't necessarily think they're missing point blank layups. But what I do think is we've gotten the ball close to the basket a number of times, and we're not we're not drawing fouls or scoring, and it really negates our height advantage and our size advantage when you keep going over, and uh, that coupled with the fact that you know I think St. Louis has some really good guards they are tough to deal with, uh, and as as the game wears on, we have to continue to maintain toughness on on defense. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Steve, Sean, thank you very much. Here in Atlantic City. The Musketeers in a battle with the Billikens. Adam Zucker at halftime. Coming up in a moment. Adam Zucker with you at the half of our first Atlantic 10 quarterfinal of the day. We'll get you back to AC shortly. Earlier this week, the players who led their teams throughout the regular season were honored, and St. Joe's Ahmad Nivens tops it all as the A-10 Player of the Year. Here's a look at the first team in alphabetical order. Nivens with 19.2 points per game, averaging a double-double with just under a dozen boards a contest as well. Jimmy Barron, the senior from Rhode Island and the sharpshooter as well, but his father, Jimmy Sr., also the coach of the year for URI. Deontay Christmas from Temple tied with Nivens for the conference's scoring lead. And how about the resurgence by Duquesne this year, keyed in part by Aaron Jackson, an 18-11 and 11 regular season. He averaged over 18 points and close to six assists a game. And, of course, from Xavier, one of its leading scorers, D.J. Raymond. Sean Miller was last season's A-10 Coach of the Year, and since he took over the Xavier program for Thad Mata, the Musketeers have steadily improved. But it took just two shots and a quick minute and 18 seconds by B.J. Raymond to propel Xavier to the Elite Eight last season. This year, Raymond is no longer that sixth-man savior, as he has become a captain, the leading scorer of the Musketeers, and as we just showed you, a first-team all-conference player. Several frames cannot capture the madness. No more than several shots can carry a program. But written in the legacy of B.J. Raymond will be sixth man turned savior. I knew I, I wasn't playing my capability and my team needed me at that time. And uh, I felt like I needed to step up, make a big shot, or just get a big rebound, do something, because our, our backs were against the wall. Scoreless for 41 minutes, Never did Raymond hit two bigger shots than an overtime of last year's Sweet 16 against West Virginia. That leaves Raymond open. That's his game. B.J. Raymond. Two seconds on the shot clock. Raymond for three. Oh! Budgets! Scoreless in regulation. Has had a huge overtime. Never did it mean more to a program trying to establish itself nationally. It felt more than basketball, you know, it felt more than a basketball game, like an achievement, like, like we did something that no other team's done. We're trying to build Xavier legacy, and we're trying to move on and uh, make this program um, not be considered a mid-major anymore. The intensity of Raymond's excitement that night 
dissipated quickly in the Elite Eight. They never trailed in this ballgame. And the UCLA Bruins win it 76-57. That loss turned the page on seniors Stanley Burrell, Josh Duncan, and Drew Lavender. Raymond would no longer come off the bench. Now he was a leader. It was a change in the guard and that as a senior and as a four-year player, it's uh, a huge responsibility to not only be the best you can be individually, but take the total responsibility of the team. Coming in this year, he already had the mindset that he was going to be a better leader. He had to be a leader because he was a senior this year, and I just think he stepped in, and he's done an outstanding job helping lead this team. You have to make sure that you're ready. Um, you have to make sure that the younger guys are ready. You have to know that uh, everybody's eye is always on you. BJ's competitiveness, you know, his consistency every day are the two things that even if he doesn't say much, that I, I think embodies who he is as a team leader. With his team poised for a run to the final four, Raymond wants his legacy to be written beyond just two shots. That moment was amazing. Uh, I think it was, it's a big, bright spot in my career. And hopefully it's not the brightest spot in my career, though. And before the Musketeers focus too much on the Final Four, they still have work to do in Atlantic City. I'm Adam Zucker in New York. The second half on the way from Boardwalk Hall, the first of four games for the 8-10 tournament. Enjoy. Read all about it here at Atlantic City. The headline from yesterday, which team will go down today? Xavier up on St. Louis here by 10 at halftime. Jason Dapp, Steve Wolf, and Bernadette McGlay, the commissioner of the Atlantic 10, joining us. Welcome to Atlantic City. The conference tournament is underway. Your thoughts on what you've seen yesterday and today so far? My thoughts are it's been great. It really has been exciting being here, and certainly yesterday, the opening round games, we started off with an overtime game and a, a great victory, obviously, by St. Louis. And so it's been super. Um, this game right here is shaping up to be a great game. It's a good tournament so far. Well, the regular season and the way things shook out, really, it's amazing. Xavier, the regular season champ, but you've got a three-way tie for second and then a four-way tie for fifth. Well, the parity of this league has really been impressive, the way teams have just been duking it out with one another all year long. Absolutely. And when you, when you look at that, you just know that it really shows the strength of the conference. And when you're looking at a number eighth ranked conference in the RPI, these are great, great teams. And um, it just shows how competitive the league is overall. When you look at this uh, conference coming in here as an outsider looking in, what was the first thing that hit you when you started working in the conference? Well, I mean, the first thing that hit me, obviously, is the great tradition in this in this league as far as the basketball teams are concerned. And, you know, a lot of people ask for the comparison between the ACC and the A-10. And the one thing I've found is great similarities. Everyone's passionate about college basketball. Great players, great coaches, great institutions with great leadership. And so there's been a lot more in common um, than there has been difference. But well, one of the big questions is going to probably be ask you, next year's conference tournament, do they have any ideas where it's going to be? Are they looking for one location? Are they going to keep moving around? Well, we actually are in the bid process right now. We have five really competitive bids. Atlantic City is one of them that are on the table. And we're going to make that decision, hopefully, prior to the Final Four and make the announcement within the next three weeks. Great. Well, it's been fun having things go on here in Atlantic City, and the excitement has been there so far. Bernadette, thanks for the time. Xavier here by 10 at halftime, closing in on half number two. The Xavier Musketeers, 19th ranking in the country, the number one seed here in the Atlantic 10 tournament. They lead the Billikens of St. Louis by 10. Jason Knapp, Steve Wolf, and the defense of the Musketeers shining early. Well, Xavier did a nice job forcing eight first-half turnovers. St. Louis struggled starting out one for five. And then Xavier on the offensive end, B.J. Raymond, really has played an outstanding first half. Four for four from the field with 13 points and two rebounds. Raymond did it inside it, and he did it outside. And at the end of the half, it's a big shot because that's a difference between a seven-point game and a ten-point game. Now you look at the overall numbers in the opening half, and again, St. Louis, eight first-half turnovers. They normally are more protective of the basketball. 
Xavier likes to get to the line a lot. They did get there, but he heard Sean Miller tell you before the break, he thought his big guys didn't do enough when they got the basketball with position inside. Well, I, I tend to agree. They had seven first half assists, but there were so many nice passes inside to the big guys and they weren't finishing. And then when they get the free throw line, especially Kenny Freeze and Jason Love, they got to knock down those free throws. Yeah, B.J. Raymond, what he's done so far in a game and a half against the Billikens this year, over 30 points. And trying to pick up where he left off in that first 20 minutes. It'll be Xavier basketball to begin uh, the second half. Jason, I think Xavier did a really nice job, although St. Louis shot 53% of the field. They did a great job on Mitchell, and he is their key. He was one for five, two turnovers, no assist, and only two points. So for Xavier, they got to continue doing that. For St. Louis, they got to get Mitchell involved in the game some more. Anderson waving out Jackson to collect the pass. Brown from the elbow, thought about it, moved inside and canned the jumper. Xavier starting on the inside instead of, as they did in the first half, starting outside in. Romain Mitchell gets it across the timeline with the Billikens. They had that nice stretch of offense near the midpoint of the first half that got them back into the game, but Eberhardt loses it out of bounds. And this is exactly how St. Louis started out the first half. Turning the basketball over, empty possessions. Mitchell has need, needs to really get focused and take leadership of this team right now before it gets out of hand. Shooting-wise, both teams 50% or better so far in the game. Anderson working against Eberhardt. Reed with the help defense got a piece. Shot clock's at seven. Raymond realizes and converts. He just looked over at Sean Miller and said, hey, I got your bus. I'm driving your bus. That was a great play by Raymond, not only knocking down the shot, but realizing the shot clock was still on and running down. Saw that great feature at halftime with Adam Zucker back in our New York studio with the big shots that Raymond hit in the postseason last year and just a player transformed from that experience. Anderson and the Musketeers on the move so far in the second half. Timeout St. Louis. B.J. Riemann from role player to first team All-Atlantic 10 performer this year gets it done and Xavier leading. Xavier had a 28-25 lead at one point of the first half. Since then, it's been all Musketeers the last 13 points in a row. And let's look back at our keys to the game at the outset for Rick Majerus and company. Well, and first of all, they've controlled the tempo and slowed it down, but they're turning the basketball over. And as far as the perimeter, they haven't been shooting well from the outside. And Lish Liddell and Mitchell only have nine points. And Xavier, on their other hand, they're winning the rebounding war. And uh, they're doing a great job of defending St. Louis's dribble drive and penetration. Last field goal for the Billikens was at the 5.08 mark left to go in the first half. So St. Louis working on a stretch of about seven minutes without a made basket from the floor. Mitchell and the switch out help for Brown. Lish and Liddell neutralized at the perimeter. Eberhardt finally getting position and a foul. The shove called inside against Brown. Now check it, it's on Jason Love. That's his first. It's interesting, Sean Miller has put Brown on Reed. And also Eberhardt is now with Jason Love, and they can switch back and forth. And now they've switched back. Xavier trying to keep Eberhardt and Reed from getting going as they did in the first half. Liddell, strong move, but can't connect on the shot. Here's Raymond.
Love, great position. Can't get it to go, but found by the freshman Reed. Once again, C.J. Anderson, not known as an assist man, making a nice entrance pass into Jason Love. He's got Willie Reed on his back. You see him. Nice pass, nice seal. Nothing but that Willie Reed could do but foul. Now Reed getting back down by the more experienced player, the junior Love, at the line. This is the first. And Jason, that's what Sean Miller was talking about at halftime. You know, getting the ball inside, not finishing, and you get fouled and not making your free throws. You know, it's almost like a turnover if you don't make your free throws after a great pass and good seal off inside. Talked about the Billikens' woes from the free throw line in the first half. Xavier has 7 of 12 for the game. But again, Sean Miller and company really priding themselves and getting to the line and then capitalizing on those opportunities once you're at the charity strike. And now it's time for senior leadership. Lish, Liddell have been very quiet here in this game. Lish heard your call and answers immediately. And he's shooting the ball really well. When you talk to the St. Louis people, they feel like he's struggled. He's got so much on his mind trying to make sure he's helping to run this show. Shot looked pretty sweet there. And that one does as well from the hands of B.J. Raymond. He Raymond. continues to fill it up here for Xavier. Raymond, first team all, 8-10, showing you why he deserves that honor. 18 points in the game, leading all scores. And the Musketeer lead out to 17. Thompson has it blocked. Anderson on the push. Three on two. Love. Will shoot two from the line. If you're a Xavier fan, you got to try to figure out who this guy number 20 is. He's the new assist man for the Musketeers. A great decision by C.J. Anderson feeding Jason Love. That's the second time in the last two possessions that Anderson's looked for Love. Now Xavier's got to finish the free throws. That foul on... Quamaine Mitchell, that's his second. And I mentioned the Musketeers ended the regular season with a loss on the road at Richmond. All four of their conference losses coming on the road and coming in tough places to play. At Duquesne, at Dayton, at Charlotte, at Richmond, and off tough turnarounds in those games. And here with rest and I'm sure some vigorous practice after that loss to Richmond, uh, the Musketeers really look like they're in stride. Well, I, I think that Sean Miller has told these guys, you got a lot to prove. You've been in the top 25 pretty much all year long, but the prognosticators think that your, your, your seating is going to slip in the NCAA tournament and you're not going to win the tournament. Everybody's talked about every other team. So I think that there's a lot riding on this tournament for this Xavier Musketeer team. After Love finishes from the line, Freeze replaces him. Brad Redford back in the game as well for Xavier. Xavier continue to substitute in and out and putting pressure defense on St. Louis, and it wears down the Billikens. And the Billikens been outscored here 12-3 so far in the second half. Liz changing that high archer off the glass and down. It's a great move by Kevin Lish. He's just been a fine player for his four years here. A senior from Belleville, Illinois. Redford controls back. Now Holloway got a foul away from the basketball. Freeze called for the personal. Sean Miller and the Musketeers try to control it in the second half. This presentation of college basketball is being brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. The CBS College Sports Network. He might take it all the way. What a hit. Pocket deep, and that one is hauled in. Now available in crystal clear HD. This season, no team is safe. See the teams making noise all season long on the CBS College Sports Network. Xavier 47, St. Louis 30. 
Just underway here in the second half, quarterfinal number one of the Atlantic 10. Kevin Lish trying to lead the Billikens on a charge. Well, he, he got around Holloway on the pick, and then Kenny Freeze has dropped the ball, but Lish, four or five, and getting to the hoop. And the Lish family with their fingerprints all over St. Louis basketball. Sister Teresa, leading scorer in the Atlantic 10 for the women this year. Kevin there as well in such a dynamic career. And Daniel, freshman guard on this Billiken squad as well. Teresa and Kevin, you see both Atlantic 10 student athletes of the year. And Kevin Lish, congratulations to him. An academic All-America selection as well. His daddy played football for Notre Dame, but as good of as an, an athlete, and you see the athletic ability going with the opposite hand there. As good of a guy as Kevin Lish, or a player as he is, he's a better person, real personable. And Rick Majerus says not one of the five nicest players he's ever had, one of the five nicest people he's ever dealt with. Oh, and he plays hard all the time. Holloway responds with a three for Xavier. It's a different Terrell Holloway. And played in the middle of the year. He really struggled with that confidence, but now he's got his head up. He's playing very good defense and knocking down the three. He certainly can be an X factor here for Xavier. Boy, big collision. Eckerly down for St. Louis and Holloway as well for Xavier. And there's another look at the three for the freshman. Holloway three for four from the field. Really doing a nice job. Only one turnover. I think when you talk about point guard play for Xavier, Sean Miller is excited about Holloway shooting the jumper, but more important than that is he's taking care of the basketball. Seven points for Holloway. Did pick up that first personal foul on the collision there with Eckerly. Off the restart. Lish has the three ball rattling it out. Anderson trying to go up and under and the shove. It's on Willie Reed. That's his second. Well, Steve, you talked about it. If Holloway and Jackson can be not spectacular, but merely consistent and effective and efficient with the basketball, this Xavier team has all the other pieces to make some noise again and deeper in the big tournament in March. Well, I think it's not only on the offensive end. It's probably more important on the defensive end. When they've lost games, they've lost to teams that have good dribble drive, and, and their ball-on-the-ball ball pressure has not been where it needs to be. They need to get that defense from the point guard and the two-guard position in place as they head into this tournament. Anderson now has 11 for the Musketeers. Raymond, the other Xavier player in double figures, he leads all scores with 18. Lish, Mitchell, motoring in. And Freeze, the seven-footer there to clog the way. And now Mitchell, a little bit ginger on the right leg after that last drive. Right now, Xavier content to move the ball around, run the shot clock down. They're up by 20. McLean called for the travel. Now, when you're Kwame Mitchell, you're 5'10", you better make sure you're not going against the big man. And there's Kenny Freeze is standing there and putting his arms up. And at that last timeout, Sean Miller, for a good portion of that timeout, told Kenny Freeze, they cannot drive around you. you got to make sure that you protect that paint. He did just that against Mitchell. Well, yesterday, Mitchell, 18 points, career high, 7 assists in the first round win against LaSalle today two points no helpers so far and, and that's you know credit Xavier's defense but you're also talking about a freshman who had a tough game yesterday played 37 minutes but you know he is not getting the help either from Liddell I think Liddell's been the one area that I think that St. Louis is missing right now they're not getting help from that that two guard position Lish off the screen, too strong. Right now it's all Lish. He's taken probably 80% of the shots here in the last five minutes. Cassidy in to replace Mitchell getting a breather on the St. Louis bench. Holloway will try it again from deep. Got banged to the floor with a rebound. 
Now Freeze had it for a moment and lost it out of bounds. Substitution. Well, right now, Xavier has a line change and brings in four new players. It's wearing down the Billikens, but really the only person that's been effective here in the second half has been Lish. Lish has all seven points. Xavier has held St. Louis to 32 points with still 13 minutes to play. St. Louis has got to get something going offensively. And just seven points since the break for the Billikens. And Mitchell, who's been so dynamic, second portion of the season, not able to get things untracked as Reed has it blocked by Love. Xavier in transition. Jackson dribbles through the lane. Open man inside Love and foul by Cassidy on the backside. Jason Love on one side, playing good, solid defense. You'll see here, coming back from the top of the key. He was up by the foul line at the top of the key and came over to make the play on Willie Reed. And then a nice bullet pass through the lane by Derek Brown, putting Jason Love on the on the line again. Check the foul. They give it to Willie Reed. He and Cassidy were both there trying to slow down Love. So that is the freshman's third. Xavier's doing a nice job here in the second half of really capitalizing on the inside game. Not shooting too many outside jump shots, but trying to feed the post, get the ball inside. And Love misfiring on the first free throw. You see Lish and Reed both getting a little breather. And Mitchell back on the floor along with Liddell Thompson as well for St. Louis. Xavier's put Jackson, Holloway, Raymond. Everybody has played Redford on Kwame Mitchell. Mitchell just continues to bring the ball court, but he's getting worn down. Really not been a factor here in this game. Turnover St. Louis. And Rick Ruggieris looking on as his squad watches Xavier pull further and further ahead. The turnovers have hurt St. Louis. Xavier has 12 points to St. Louis's two off the turnovers. And ten giveaways now in the game for the Billikens. Brown missed the three. Rebound Anderson. And he'll dribble out and reset the offense. Xavier really in no rush to score. Just taking the wind, taking the air out of the ball, moving around, waiting for the open shot. Good hands for the Billikens. Thompson got a piece, went to Mitchell, and he's fouled by Jackson. I'll say Jackson with a cheap, he needs to run back on defense. And as soon as I say how good the ball movement was, C.J. Anderson firing one in the post with two guys defending Jason Love. Right now, St. Louis has got to get something going. Well, the winner of this game moving on to the Atlantic 10 semifinals to take on the victor of Temple and St. Joseph's. The second Atlantic 10 quarter final game of the four on the docket here for Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And again, Xavier jumped out of the A-10 tournament in the semis last year. Mitchell responds just his second field goal of the game. The last 12 games, he's averaged about 16 per contest, but held in check this afternoon. Brown. Rebound by Love. St. Louis doing a good job initially on defense, but they're getting, Xavier's getting second shots right now. Xavier, second half rebounds, 10 to nothing. And they have dominated the Billikens on the glass. There's a little bit of a margin, but it's really blossomed. 27-12 rebounding edge right now for the Musketeers. Raymond off the curl. Miss badly, and Thompson gets it. Last time down, Mitchell was able to spread the offense and get a seam into the lane. He's a lot quicker than Jackson. He needs to get to the basket. A battle for the basketball. It'll belong to St. Louis when we return. Xavier cruising here in the quarterfinal of the Atlantic 10.
Here in Atlantic City, the Xavier Musketeers try to win the conference tournament after winning the regular season title in the Atlantic 10 in the A-10 men's basketball tournament. Continues this week here at Atlantic City. If you don't have your tickets yet, go to the Boardwalk Hall ticket office or call Ticketmaster and be sure to visit AtlanticCityNJ.com for all the latest information about tickets, discounts, and fan zone. That's AtlanticCityNJ.com. Now the first round yesterday, some great games. St. Louis, in fact, in the opener. Uh, got past LaSalle in overtime, and now the first of the four quarterfinals. And the Musketeers, after being up 10 at the break, have lengthened the lead to near 20 here with 10.30 left to go in the second half. Jason Knapp, Steve Wolf, glad to have you along for this Atlantic 10 basketball showdown. Xavier opening up out of the timeout in the zone. A little change of scenery on the defensive end. Conklin, Cassidy. Mitchell open for three, and Conklin able to grab the ball. Mitchell trying to deal it off to Conklin and ping-ponged off a couple of bodies. It belongs to Xavier. Now you'll see Mitchell penetrating the gap. That's what you do against zone pressure. No look pass, but B.J. Raymond, really nice job. Slicing down and tipping the ball out of bounds off Conklin. We talked about the young point guards in this game, and Rick Majer has really been effusive with the praise and the growth of Kwame and Mitchell and liking to try to take the same process with him as he did Andre Miller at Utah. And when we saw how that turned out in his college career, now in the NBA, and Sean Miller, of course, his great point guard days at Pitt, and that's carried over with you know, the teachings and the tutelage of Holloway and Jackson for the Musketeers. Brown, second chance. Oh, scooping lefty shot. You see the athleticism of Derek Brown. Well, Xavier blew an opportunity with Freeze in the lane on an open layup, but rebounding the ball very well this afternoon. That was one of our keys, rebounding a defense, and Xavier really, this second half especially, has done a great job of both. Reed, tough shot in the paint. You understand the potential in that 6'9 player. And he gets to the basket quick. He's long and leak. When his body fills out, you know, he, he could be a lot like Nivens from St. Joe's. Of course, we'll see the Atlantic 10 player of the year coming up in quarterfinal number two. St. Joseph's locking up against Temple. Showdown of the Philly Big Five powers. That's coming up a little bit later on here from Atlantic City. This really should be a great tournament. It already has started out that way, but it, and I think in the quarterfinals, Anybody can win out. Baseline jumper from Reed, no. Holloway. Freshman on freshman down low. Freeze being guarded by Reed. They're battling it out down low. Brown, a little out of control. Reed gathers. Still plenty of time to shoot. Ten on the shot clock. Brown pulls the trigger. And Reed gets the rebound. Real good defense by St. Louis that time. Now they need to do something on the other end. Little dribble penetration in the lane. Look for Reed again. Maybe even Cassidy. Get him an open jump shot. Somebody's got to help the scoring here for the Billikens. Lish can't finish. McLean the rebound. Well, Xavier's help defense has been great. That big man switching out all the ball screens throughout. Freeze the take, goes and one. Uh, the seven foot freshman out of Massillon, Ohio, making his presence felt here in his first trip to the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. Back here at Atlantic City. Xavier 57, St. Louis 36, 734. Left to go in this Atlantic 10 quarterfinal. Coming up in the second quarterfinal here from Boardwalk Hall. The top two scores in the Atlantic 10 go head to head. Player of the Year, Ahmad Nibbins and Deontay Christmas trying to lead the Atlantic 10 in scoring for the third year in a row, which nobody has done. Great showdown between these players and rival teams coming up in a little bit. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if Temple's inside game can stop Nivens and if Christmas is able to light it up like he has all year long. He's a great player. 
the Owls Road Deontay Christmas and some of their other stars to the tournament title last year and getting the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament, something that wouldn't have happened in theory if the Owls had not won it all and maybe same position for both of those squads coming up. The winner will survive and advance the loser and will probably be done as far as NCAA chances on the season. Thompson with the three for St. Louis. Kenny Freeze has been bottling things up inside, so they pulled Thompson back out, and he drains the three. The air gets really, really tight up there. Hard to breathe when Freeze gets out near that three-point line. Now, this Xavier team, talking about uh, tournament selection, certainly will get an at-large bid should they not come through here in the conference tournament. Dayton seems secure as well. We're talking to Bernadette McGlade, Commissioner of the Atlantic 10, get the sense that uh, a couple teams get some things done here in the conference tournament. We're looking at three teams here for the Atlantic 10. If the Temple or Rhode Island or somebody else comes out of the pack and makes some noise, works their way to the final or wins it all. I'm talking to Jimmy Barron, the son, they're, they're really looking at one game at a time, but it's something he wants to get to that tournament. And really, they have played so well the latter part of this year. Uh, held basketball, it'll belong to St. Louis, the possession arrow favoring the Billikens. Rhode Island has been so hot before they lost that last second play against UMass. You know, UMass is one of those teams that has so much ability. They're learning about their new coach, Derek Kellogg. They, they have a chance of doing making some uh, damage in this tournament, too. Yeah, talk about the parity and third uh, three-way tie for second four-way tie for fifth in the conference just some of the great fantastic finishes this year in conference play as Lish Kevin able to twist Lish. in for two more 13 for the senior under six to go here remember 13-point lead for Xavier in the first half. The Billikens shot that all the way down to two. Do they have another surge in them here? With 5.30 thereabouts left to go. Well, not when Love gets open, looks inside. Boy, Love shaking free and got the second chance and foul. Boy, this conference, as we talked about, here's a look at the regular season and the way the results were compared to what the teams were ranked in the preseason. Look at Rhode Island there, ninth in the preseason poll, and the Rams deliver. Hey, you talk, you talk about this Xavier team going wire to wire, but the other teams, you know, I, I think that St. Bonaventure, when they were, uh, you know, not having a chance to be involved in the running, but here is my... Uh, MB, MIP, most improved, you know, starting out the year, looking at their being ninth. They started off slow in conference play, but then they won six in a row before losing to UMass. It's nice to see Jimmy Barron go out on a good note. Team Richmond and Duquesne, two teams again picked in the bottom half of the draw in the preseason. Boy, they succeeded mightily, Duquesne. And and their talented crew in Richmond again, despite the injury to their best player, Dan Giroux, in the offseason, the Spiders have showcased their talented backcourt. Some great young players. I, I was real impressed. Aaron Jackson, you know, along with Nivens, the co-MVPs of this, this league, because Aaron Jackson, his size, he can play the point, he can play the three. Uh, he has done it all for Coach Everhart over at Duquesne, and they're a surprise team. But uh, this league, there is a lot of parity, but there's a lot of good talent. Richmond, Kevin Anderson, remarkable sophomore, rookie of the year last year. Tommy Liddell the third drains a big three ball. Yeah, you don't know, look up too quick. It's a 14-point game right now. Lish and Liddell back to back. The two seniors trying to get this team motivated. Xavier's falling asleep a little bit. Five threes in the game now for St. Louis. 8-1 run. That'll change after the basket from C.J. Anderson and the chance to make it a three-point play. When you get up by 20, a lot of times you forget about that perimeter defense. C.J. Anderson not able to get out on Liddell. And Liddell knocking down the three. But once again, a senior, one of the three Musketeers, taking it right to the rack. C.J. Anderson, who I think has played 
a very unselfish game this afternoon. Having a chance for the and one. And the foul on Everhart, that's his third. And Anderson has done a little bit of everything. 13 points, four rebounds, four assists. Not able to connect from the free throw line. And add in three steals as well for the senior C.J. Anderson. You know, he could have had a lot more assists too because the big guys have not finished or they've gotten fouled. You know, results of his good passes in the post. Lish had a decent look and got only iron. Well, Jackson and the Musketeers look to be deliberate. Raymond, seven to shoot. Maybe forced it from McLean, cleaning up on the backside with the rebound. The 11th offensive rebound for the Musketeers. St. Louis only has three offensive rebounds. Clearly, Xavier has dominated on the glass. Sean Miller up, trying to orchestrate things from the Xavier bench. And it's a killer. Offensive rebounds with the clock running down like this. Xavier can just milk that clock. Boy, Mitchell really banging hard on Jackson. Four to shoot. Anderson. Inside, love. That's using all of the clock and getting the payoff at the end. Is that number 20? Is that Chris Paul? That's a great feed of the post. The senior C.J. Anderson doing a marvelous job of finding the inside openings. Ball faking and getting the pass for the easy scores. Jason Love now with 10 points, seven in the second half. Anderson with five assists. Mitchell lost it. Musketeers. Now Raymond thought about the break, and once he couldn't get the handle, Xavier slows it down. And St. Louis going to come shy, be shy of winning those 20 games unless they have a chance to go to the NIT, which I would think they would. And they've done it with one of the youngest teams in America. Seven freshmen on scholarship. Well, if they do get there, as the basket is made by Anderson, and it's a tribute and the experience and the practice time that the young players will get, and also a nice reward for the seniors that have gone through with the coaching change, sticking it out with Lish and Liddell and Everhart, and get that payoff, and having something to play for in the postseason. I can't say enough about this senior class. You know, Liddell and Lish are going to be ever linked. St. Louis basketball. Mitchell, and there is the future of the Billikens in a big way. His first three of the game and five tries. A uh, little bit too little, too late. Mitchell really not a factor here in this afternoon's game. you got to credit Xavier's defense. But in the last seven, eight games, Mitchell has been everything to St. Louis. Maybe a little tired coming in here after playing yesterday and playing all those minutes. And Xavier certainly made him work for everything, running some extra bodies as we've seen throughout the game at him when he had the basketball. And making him play full court. They made him play, you know, in the 94 feet. He did not, uh, they back. They didn't back off. They made him play pressure defense. And Rick Majerus uh, taking a timeout here. Even though this game is getting away from the Billikens, uh, still coaching and preaching and really working with this young team and building towards the future. Here's a look at the conference awards in the Atlantic 10 for the 08-09 season. Nibbins player of the year, Andrew Nicholson. How about the fine for Mark Schmidt and St. Bonaventure, the rookie of the year, and some of the other players honored for their contributions this year. Nicholson, the Canadian Flash, had a great year, and St. Bonaventure turning it around over there. And you gotta be happy for Jim Barron, who's won Coach of the Year, not only at Rhode Island, but also at St. Bonaventure. Gets to be Coach of the Year with his son, having an outstanding year. Uh, delicious. Kevin has been that at times in this game, and throughout his Billiken career, sixth all-time at scoring over 1,500 points. Top 10 in assists as well. 
Right now, Rick Majerus has four freshmen and a sophomore in the game. Epitomizes the youth. Xavier, on the other hand, has three freshmen in and a walk-on. And again, this St. Louis team will be younger next year when they lose these seniors. They'll be just about all sophomores and freshmen in the next year. But they're young. They're still talented. But Xavier, just too much for the Billikens here at Atlantic City. You know, Rick Majerus said when he came in here, he said that Xavier has some lottery players. A lot of our guys are end up going to be dentists. And that uh, this says that he's got to get some more ability in here, some more athletic ability into St. Louis. And he surely has done it with this freshman class. How about Joe Hughes, the little used backup off the bench, sophomore from Indiana, or Indianapolis, beating the shot clock. You always like to see the walk-ons get a chance to get in here. They work so hard year, day in and day out, but they're on the scout squad. As time runs down, they're going to be on the court in the 8-10 quarterfinals. Now the Musketeers moving on to the semifinals here in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Sean Miller congratulating St. Louis on a hard-fought game, but Xavier, the top seed, gets through 66-47 back to Atlantic City in a moment. Win number 25 of the season for the Xavier Musketeers. Efficient and impressive, 66-47 over St. Louis. And the Musketeers move on to the Atlantic 10 semifinals, trying to win the conference tournament for the first time since 06. Back in a moment to Atlantic City. This presentation of college basketball is being brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. They're out there, and they're getting closer with every tick of the clock. With every three-pointer made. With every steal and loose ball lost, they strike without warning. Their message is clear. No team is safe. See the teams making noise all season long on the CBS College Sports Network. Watch Bracket Breakdown presented by Bass Pro Shops immediately following the CBS NCAA Selection Show Sunday at 7. The greatest college sports video library of all time. Introducing the new NCAA.com, the official site of college sports. The top seed moving on to the Atlantic 10 semifinals. Xavier with a 66-47 win over St. Louis. The Musketeers there awaiting the survivor of the next quarterfinal tilt between St. Joseph's and Temple coming up next here from Boardwalk Hall. Steve, your final thoughts on the win here for the Musketeers? Well, I think Xavier was dominant. They played great defense. They rebounded the basketball. St. Louis really could not get it going offensively. Yeah, the Billikens see their Atlantic 10 title dreams go by the board. Xavier's are still alive. Musketeers get it done. 66-47 for Steve Wolf and our entire crew. This is Jason Knapp for the latest Atlantic 10 scores, news, highlights, and analysis. Log on to Atlantic10.com. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports, the pulse of College Sports. So long from Atlantic City, the Musketeers move on to the semifinals.